What's going on everyone? It's Greg back with another Mirror 4 video and today we're going to go over the Lancer skills. Now, I do want to do a general Lancer guide, but today I'm just going to focus on the skills because there's so there's kind of like a lot to try to understand with skills and I'm still not going to be able to cover everything. And, you know, let me preface this video by saying like we'll, we'll call this the Lancer skills V1. Why? Because there's there's so much evolution to the skills over time that you might end up using them a little bit differently in the end game versus now. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I do want to say before you leave, if you're not a Lancer, you should pay attention to this video because I can, I'm still going to show you some stuff that you can apply to every class, especially when it comes to talking about what bash is and things like that and what these different color skills mean. So, you know, I think this will be helpful to pretty much anyone, but it is going to be targeted toward Lancers. Now, first and foremost, just go to uh, the skill screen. You have, you know, your skills as well as your ultimate. Ultimate is at the top of the list. It's this purple outline. All right, so before we start talking about our actual skills and our ultimate, let's talk about the tiers of skills. So you, there is skill awakening. So our base skills start at tier one common. We don't really get any major boosts until tier five rare. So when, you, when you're leveling them up as commons, you're going to get like a 2, 3, 4, maybe 5% boost if you're lucky on some of these things like physical attack and stuff like that. Once you hit tier 5, you get into additional bonuses. And then as you hit tier 8, you're going to get a pretty big jump in the power and maybe some stuff added to it as well. In this case, you know, we have this while burned at tier 5 rare and that carries through up until tier 8 when it, has, when it says while you're burned or chilled. Then finally, you max it out at tier 10 legendary. You're gonna get a pretty strong boost. And again, you still have a chance of some stuff changing. Um, whereas like here, we're gonna get, get a huge boost to 120% chance to knock down a character. So you know, you're depending on how much knockdown resistance someone has, you're almost guaranteed to knock them down. So that is the tier system. That's why I'm going to say that this is like a V1 guide. Like this is probably going to evolve over time, but no one has, I mean, you have a few people that have epic tier or epic level skills, but it may be like, couple, uh, it's a handful of people. So right now I'm, at most you have people with rare skills. So, you know, this is going to be a more early game focused video and we can come out with something later on once I unlock the rest of the skills. Now, let's do a overview of our skills. Our ultimate here, you know, early game and then mid game. So our tier, our tier one through four ultimate, you're gonna give us invincibility for two seconds, 100% chance to knock down the monster, 10% chance to knock down the character. Um, and if you have more targets, it decreases the chance. So like if you're hitting like 10 mobs, it's gonna have a decreased chance of knocking them down. So once you hit tier five, and this is with the one rare book after you max it out at tier four. This one is going to add the uh, pretty significant boost to knockdown chance on characters. And then we add this while burn skill attack damage boost depending on the burn stacks. So, you know, it's an added little buff here. I think that's very situational. I don't really know too many scenarios where that would have played out for me, but it is a boost to the skill. Now let's get into our normal skills. We have Ravaging Blow, which as you can see, you know, I, I want you to pay attention to what these do. This is important. This is going to tie into the next point I make. So Ravaging Blow, you know, we're doing an attack as a combo damage. We're hitting six times. We're going to chill for eight seconds. We're going to, oh, I'm sorry. This is, that's our, as you can see, this is a, the huge boost at tier five. So at tier four, when you have a common skill, you're just going to get chilled for five seconds. Going to put that debuff on them. You can get six hits. You can see the damage here. Once you hit tier five, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was a more significant damage boost, but I'm wrong. It's not a significant damage boost, but you do get a little boost here. It's, it's pretty much the same as the other levels, but you get a huge boost here from what's added. So not only are we chill for eight seconds now, are we chilling them for eight seconds? Now the monster's movement speed is minus 50 for 10 seconds and our skill attack damage boost is plus 25% against monsters. It's a very good PVE. Um, upgrade here on the skill and we get a party effect of physical attack plus 20 and we're not going to go d deep into what the skills you know get further down you need to go ahead and read up on these skills yourself 
Now we have Crescent Blade, uh, which is currently tier five. So before tier five, we have, you know, uh, a double hit physical and uh, attack right here. And when the enemy is chilled or quelled, you get bash and damage boost plus 50%. You get 100% chance to knock down the monster, 10% chance to knock down the character. I'm gonna go give you an example and go over what this bash is. And so, you know, just after we go over the skills. At tier five, again, you're gonna get a boost in the knockdown. If it's not, if the enemy is not knocked down, they're getting knockdown resistance decrease of 10%. So here at uh, tier five, we got a pretty significant boost in the damage from bash, which is really nice. Uh, then you don't get another boost in that until you're tier eight. So as you can see, once you hit those different tier, those different awakenings, so to speak, um, you know, you're gonna get a decent boost. Next, we have Narvana Kick. I don't wanna spend too much time on these, so I'm gonna try to run through them a little bit quicker. You know, before you hit the, the rare book, you're gonna get 100% chance to knock down a monster, 10% on the character. Once you hit the first awakening, you're gonna add, uh, if not knocked down, we reduce the knockdown resistance chance. The, the knockdown for characters is up to 30% and knockdown enemies receive 30% of physical attack at the damage over time for two seconds. Pretty nice. Double strike. This is going to hit, it's called double strike, but it's gonna hit three times. So what do you know? Um, and before you get your rare book, you're gonna have wind shield, bash and damage boost plus 50%. When, uh, then we add wind shield, skill attack, damage boost plus 20, 25, 30%, depending on the number of chill stacks. And so as you can see, these moves are important when the enemy is chilled. And we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, bash and damage boost is up to 65% from 50%. So you can see how these get boosted up. Uh, Sweeping Storm, it is, uh, makes you immune to crowd control while casting and puts the enemy in darkness for five seconds. And the monster's physical and spe uh, spell attack is decreased by 100 for five seconds. So if the enemy is, or it puts it, it once you hit the awakening, it adds a, a school, skill cooldown reduction minus 30%, 35%, 40%, percent depending on these darkness stacks. So pretty nice debuff there. And we add in a character's physical and spell attack minus 100 for 10 seconds. Dragon Tail. I don't, have, don't even have this one upgraded yet. Right now, skill attack damage boost plus 30% against monsters. That gets boosted up to 50%, plus we're going to add a recovery skills recovery amount minus 10% for 10 seconds. That's going to give a little bit of a debuff to like Taos. Uh, boss damage reduction plus 5%. Not bad. Ascending uh, Dragon is first thing it gives is just chilled for 5 seconds. Once you hit that first awakening, you're gonna get a monster movement speed minus 50 for five seconds. If the character is chill, and this is important, then we got 30, 35, 40% chance to trigger severe coldness, which triggers 100% uh, plus stun chance, sun stun success chance to freeze the character for two seconds, depending on the number of chill sacks. And then we get a monster attack damage boost which is a buff crushing below this is kind of a big one so at first you know you got invincibility for one second after casting you have a hundred percent chance knock down monster 10 percent on character you see a trend here then we're going to add in a skill attack damage boost plus 10 percent 15 seconds and some nice buffs here skill cooldown reduction plus 20 percent for 15 seconds so it's going to get your skills cooled down uh faster and then we of course bump up the knockdown on characters to 30 percent and then we add the debuff if you're not knocked down and skill attack damage boost is plus 25 percent against bosses pretty nice wind wall uh while you're casting you're immune to cloud crowd control effects monster damage reduction five percent these are basically getting some buffs here and then uh once you get to the first awakening, the, the monster damage reduction goes up to 15%, which is pretty nice. Bash damage reduction plus 27%, all damage reduction plus 20%. You're basically getting kind of 
buffed here and you're gonna have more survivability grants then we're gonna grant a shield to the party allowing all damage reduction plus 30% for four seconds and then uh, parties boss damage reduction and party spell attack all right piercing spear um, the first tier uh, or first four tiers of it or yeah four tiers uh, uh, standard 100% and 10% on those. One additional hit when hit from near max range. Same thing applies here, but we get our boost up to 30% on characters. And if you knock it down, we're going to re uh, reduce the enemy's knockdown, knockdown chance resistance. And while in darkness, 40, 45, 50% chance to blind for two seconds. So that means you have to pay attention to which moves are, you know. Put them in darkness and things like that it kind of actually gets quite complex and i'm still not you know manualing most of it so you know it kind of is what it is the main thing i do is the bash and we'll talk about that in a minute absorption you know early on recover 100 percent then once we hit the t5 awakening recover 250 percent and we're gonna uh debuff the enemy so that we do more damage then we have blitz strike and as you can see here by now, all these all these yellowish skills uh, pretty much all um, do a knockdown. So here we got our standard amounts again. And at tier five, uh, we add in the, that knockdown resistance chance. We add we take this up to thirty percent, and then we have a hundred percent chance to cause concussion on successful knockdown, triggering twenty percent to stun for additional two seconds. Knockdown enemy receives 20% of physical attack as do uh, damage over time for two seconds and skill re damage reduction plus three percent So that is the brief overview of these skills and what they are, you know from tier 1 to tier 4 and then from tier 5 up until I think it's tier 8 Like I said, you get in those epics and legendaries people don't have those yet. They might have a few I mean, we got one person on server that has most of them, but you know what, what can you do if you wail out you wail out good for you so you know we've covered the skills so i want to kind of talk about the strategy with a lancer and first and foremost let me say this you see here i have this this bar with all these skills that pretty much do knockdown and stuff and some of them do those buffs i'm still not in tune completely with what's going on here what i might do is actually move this uh first one to my slot here although I do like this for my AoE like if I'm working in magic square or something but you know those skills I might switch out and um, so that I can control a little bit more when I have those buffs other than that the key things here is to understand is that your purple you know your purple skills are heals I'm pretty you know 90% sure on it these yellow ones all, I believe, do knockdown or do some kind of effect related to that. And you gotta understand knockdown like that is not considered a debuff, and we'll get into that in a second. Then you have these green moves. These are your bash moves, and I'm gonna explain how bash works in a minute. Then you have these blue skills, and those skills are what cause debilitation. So, if you do debilitation, that's going to like if you put chill on them and things like that and you know that is going to increase the other stuff which we'll get into here in a second so it is important how you do your moves if you do auto you're you, you're essentially losing a lot of effect that you could be having i noticed that the ai does not do um bash very well and so you know you have to take a little bit of control over it what I tend to do for my skills is run them on normal. That way I can do a little bit of interference myself. Now, I'm not no, I'm not an expert. When I do get into involved in some PvP, I just switch over here, try to get some knockdowns in, and come back and get my bash damage. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and explain bash. Bash is essentially extra damage. It, it turns the move to where it's doing extra damage. And you can know that you're about to do a bash if these skills light up. So let's just go ahead and do a quick demonstration. If I go pull this mob here, and let's say I'm gonna use one of my debilitation, I'm gonna go like this right here, and then I'm going to say, 
you know, this is going to charge this up. And then if I hit boom, boom, you see the yellow and the red text pop up and that is your bash and that's your bash damage. It shows up differently from crit damage. Now you could have a crit bash as well. And that shows up still like the bash, but it has crit next to it. And you know, that's, that's still going to be obvious. So again, let me kind of show you here. If I trigger this, it's going to trigger my bash and then I bash. And you can see only two mobs were debuffed at the time or had the debilitation. And so that caused that problem or caused that bash. Uh, and the one did not get the bash. So if I do this other one, put chill on them, do this one, boom, bash, bash. You can see the difference in the damage. That's what that means. Like I said, you can crit a ba uh, bash as well. So, you know, it all depends on the ordering of the skills. Now, for Lancer, you got one, one thing you got to realize, like this skill right here, the Ascending Dragon will, you know, do additional stuff based on the, um, the chill that's currently on. So it says if, when the, when the character is chill, okay. So I actually, I didn't even notice this until I just looked at it right now. If it's a character that's chill and I feel like it applies to the mods. I feel like I've seen this. There's a 20, uh, 30, 35%, 40% chance to trigger severe coldness, triggering 100% chance, uh, uh, plus stun success chance to freeze the character for two seconds. I feel like this does apply to my, I feel like I've frozen mobs like this before. So I'm not sure exactly, you know, if that is just character, I don't believe it is, but it could be, maybe I'm misunderstanding. So the way you would trigger that is I would have to hit this one first. That's going to put the chill on there. Then I go hit this and then I get that chill. And then now you can see I got, uh, that chill on there. And I, I didn't see the effect from that on, on the freeze on that one, but it's not like a hundred percent chance that's going to happen. So that's, you know, that's just kind of the, the overview of that. The key thing is how you're going to get your bash. So like I say, if you come in here and you activate your chill on the mob, then you can bash. And I got a crit in there, but it wasn't a bash crit. Um, so again, let's do it one more time like this do 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 and bash there you go there was the crit bash you can see the little text difference different from a regular crit so you're actually critting on the bash and that's kind of you know when you see the stuff about having a bash damage boost that's what it's re referring to it's going to increase the damage on that bash so that is kind of like the big overview of the skills like i said you can't activate your ultimate on you know auto you have to manual that comes in handy sometimes if you are like doing like a semi auto type thing if you're doing like magic square and stuff man you can run this thing so much because it actually charges up based on like i don't know if it's hits or mobs that you kill I'm, i believe it's like somewhat based on maybe a little bit of both but i know in magic square my thing recharges fast i can use it almost every time i bunch up some mobs so keep that in mind Hope that is giving you a good overview of skills. Uh, you know, I, know, I don't know exactly how long this was. Uh, I, I think it was kind of long, but it is what it is. You know, I'm going to have the timestamps in there. So hopefully if you didn't want to read all this. If you want, if you already read all the skill description, you could have just skipped to um, this little tutorial here. But like I said, the, the bash is like one of the most important things. If I'm gathering up mobs, I like to use these moves here. Do my bash. I might use one bash, use the other one bash again. Because uh, sometimes the debuff doesn't last long enough to bash twice. Um, again, like I use this whirlwind. Is it whirlwind? Uh, shoot, I don't know what it's called. Sweeping storm. If you use sweeping storm, I use that for like some crowd control. Again, we're gonna do a bash. Boom, boom. That does your most damage. Like when you, if you're manual farming, like that's what you want to do. So uh, I'm just gonna stick this on auto for right now and um you know finish off this quest but i hope that helps you guys understand a little bit more about the skills i, I know i didn't talk too much about the gold ones but they're, they're really for the knockdown and stuff like that and i hope that you know this helps you become a little bit more effective it tells you how to organize your skills a little bit i know me personally i probably want to see if i can trigger this more often because it is giving you the buff and, and we we'll probably see the buffs right there uh, well, we got whirlwind HP recovery 
Uh, it's hard to see sometimes what all is going on. Yeah, we got our buffs here from Windwall, the monster damage reduction. You know, you can kind of see what's going on, pay attention to it. But, you know, I would maybe think about switching some of these around, but it's not too hard to switch these, but sometimes I get messed up doing it. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta try to master a few things once. I'll tell you what, one of the most important things I'll tell you to master is master the bash. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing to activate your bash. You do your two debuff skills, which are blue. You can do one or the other. Once you have a debuff on there, then you can bash. Your bash skill will light up. I be trying to bash all the time. I want to go bash, 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 bash. You just want to bash because you can do so much more damage. So, hope this video helped you guys. Like I say, it did apply to both, uh, you know, pretty much all classes from, you know, the skill explanation portion. Um, you know, we did the overview on the Lancer skills. If you feel like I missed anything or you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the guide, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on. I got plenty of more guides coming and tip, quick tips coming all the time. So thank you guys for all the support and I'll catch you in the next one.